Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, Forex Gold and the S&P fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 9th of September. I hope you're all doing well and don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video content with your fellow trading colleagues and across your social media platforms if you find the content that I provide uh, useful. So, <clears throat> lots to go over this week. Um, as you can see on the right hand side, um, I've got entered into uh, quite a few trades this week and got some updates from last week. So updates were uh, on the Australian New Zealand dollar, Euro New Zealand dollar and the New Zealand yen. And in the new trades that I entered this week was CAD yen, uh, Swiss yen, Aussie CAD, Aussie Swiss, uh, the uh, Japan 225, the Nikkei, uh, uh, Japan, Japanese stock market, as well as silver on dollar and silver euro. So stick around. That'll be at the end of the video after we get into the week's analysis. If you want to see, uh, get a glimpse into, you know, how I get into trades as well as the fundamentals behind this. So really um, looking at the week ahead and the week ahead um, in the United States, all attention will be on inflation as both consumer and producer prices index are set to be released. Uh, investors will also be watching export and import prices along with the Michigan Consumer Confidence Survey in the euro area. The key focus will be on the upcoming interest rate decision. That's going to be very important. Uh, China will have a busy week with foreign trade data, CPI, PPI and new yuan loans. The reason why China is quite important is because it kind of sets the tone for global growth or um, or global contraction, right? Maybe a bit more risk on or risk off, depending on <clears throat> what China is doing, because China is the, really the world's economic engine. In the UK, the unemployment rate, July's GDP growth and industrial production figures will be released. Additionally, industrial production data will be reported in the euro area. In Australia, the Westpac Consumer Confidence Index will be closely monitored. So um, lots going on this week, <clears throat> lots that have happened uh, actually last week. So um, yeah, let's get, uh, let's get into it. So uh, looking at the dollar index and the dollar index, the equally weighted dollar index is uh, what I use. And uh, if you want to find out a bit more about that, then on the top right hand side, I have a video that you can click on uh, to understand why I use the equally weighted indexes rather than something like the DXY or the USDX and why I think it's uh, a lot better to use the equally weighted um, indexes. So um, the dollar, uh, fundamentally, we did have um, a bit of uh, news non-farm payrolls one second let me just get this lined up so <clears throat> with the uh, with non-farm payrolls and unemployment it says here that the slight improvement in the unemployment rate suggests that uh, things have improved but large downward revisions to July data and a disappointing non-farm payrolls print even when adjusted for the estimated overstatement means means jobs creation was probably flat in July and barely positive in August. Powell may not be able to convince other Fed officials to vote for jumbo rate cuts after this print. Um, so it was really a bit mixed um, in terms of the data. And so it says here as well that there are two roads they could they could take steady 25 basis point cuts with a commitment to do more if the labor market shows signs of additional cooling, which it did today, or you go with a larger increments and try to downplay the negative signal, says Laura. Uh, Rosna Warburton, a partner at Macro Policy Perspectives. There are two paths and we feel on the fence with this report, but it leans towards 50, she said. Now, looking at the FedWatch tool, it was a bit of a crazy day um, in terms of the expectations for either uh, 50 or 25 basis points. At one point, it was 50-50. So, um, you know, down here, we've got the 25 basis points or 50 basis point probability. And at the moment, it's settled on 70-30. But um, maybe about an hour afterwards, it was actually 50-50. 
um, and you've got uh, some wild swings on those uh, those lower time frames. So the market settled down uh, by the end of the day and thinks, in fact, that the higher probability, the 70 percent chance of uh, a 25 basis points uh, cut. And if that is the case, then, in fact, the dollar, I don't think the dollar is really going to sell off. I think um, the uh, 50 basis points would have to be priced out of the market, which could lead, in fact, the dollar to rally a bit. Right. So um, at the moment we are in this uh, in this range. Um, so we're at really these lows and um, price is really at fair value and I think prices may actually start to drift a bit higher and kind of remain within this range here um, depending or uh, we may get prices actually pulled back I wouldn't expect it but prices could pull back to this uh, supply zone here but actually I do expect prices to kind of remain in uh, this uh, this area here for the uh, for the dollar until uh, I guess some new information comes out uh, if, if if there's 50 basis points gets priced in then um, you're likely to see prices continue falling but as long as um, 25 basis points cut is the uh, is the higher probability we're likely to probably remain in this in this auction for the US dollar. Looking at the dollar yen and the dollar yen uh, this week, um, the yen has kind of gone from strength to strength. It's really the only uh, central bank that is looking to um, to high rates, whereas everyone else is looking to cut rates. And uh, in Japan, <clears throat> the latest news is really that currency strategists have had a radical rethink on the trajectory of the yen in the wake of the Bank of Japan's interest rate hike in July <clears throat> and the Federal Reserve's recent signalling of looming cuts to borrowing costs. And it says here, the play out of those events gave us greater conviction to lower our dollar yen forecast, a Christopher Wong FX strategist at Overseas Chinese Bank Corp, which cut its end of year view on the pair <coughs> to 138 from 141 so lower uh, dollar yen which is yen strengthening and dollar weakening the fed embarked on a rate cut cycle which means the bank fed uh, boj policy shifts from divergence to convergence so ultimately you have one central bank that is looking to uh, to obviously high rates which is the yen one looking to cut rates which is the federal reserve and the, you want to buy the one that is hiking and sell the one that is cutting right so that's really what we're seeing uh, in price action doesn't mean that price can't pull back in fact you want it to pull back because you don't want to sell it low so you want prices to pull back and then um, if you can get a bit bit more of a pullback into a level then um, you can uh, look to re-enter on the uh, trend to the downside and so you know one three eight was um was was seen by the end of the year so 138 is 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 down here so you know there's still a few hundred pips to go about 300 pips to go at least so um you know three to four hundred pips so let's see what happens uh with the dollar yen but yeah my bias would be more to the downside um than than going long Dollar Swiss at the moment. Dollar Swiss um, holding on. Swiss isn't a uh, currency pair that I would look to buy. Um, so ultimately, uh, this pair I'm not really too interested in. But if you are, um, there are reasons to probably buy the dollar if they continue to uh, remain, or, or the market continues to think that the uh, Fed are going to cut by 25 basis points the Swiss franc are looking to cut rates as well so maybe what we might see again is more a bit more of a range uh, a bit more of an auction price action sideways moving price action rather than any particular trend so if you do want to get involved in this uh, trade to the downside you're looking for a pull back really up and up to this supply zone from where we are now all right, something like that. And then, you know, you're looking for a short trade, maybe up into the uh, 08650 area. And if you are uh, buying, then really now should be really the time to look for any kind of buy trades, maybe with some targets, depending on the risk reward around this supply zone or maybe the fresher area of supply. The US dollar CAD, um, the Canadian dollar, the Bank of 
Canada actually cut rates uh, last week. Uh, it was on the Wednesday. One second, it was here. So Bank of Canada interest rates, they cut rates. And so um, that really should weaken the Canadian dollar. And also as well, the uh, the CAD and the Bank of Canada are looking to continue continuously or the market are thinking that they're going to continuously uh, cut rates so ultimately um, if they continue to cut rates then really the CAD should get weaker over time now again week to week um, who knows what may happen but ultimately over the medium to long term you should see CAD weakness now will you see that expressed with uh, with the dollar um, it's it's harder to tell because the dollar also uh, the Fed they're also cutting uh, at the same time so again I'd probably expect some sort of uh, maybe some sort of auction to some degree um, around maybe some sort of supply zone or somewhere around here as we do have as well an area of uh, resistance that you can use as confluence with uh with uh with a supply zone so i think we might see something like this um going into the future but not really a pair that i'm interested in at all i like to see uh, stronger divergences than that uh the pound dollar so the pound dollar is something that i am interested in going long on uh one of the one of the reasons is that the uh the bank of england are well, they're kind of seen as either cutting smaller than the uh, fed right or not cutting at all so if we go to the uk channel it says here that the bank of england could opt to cut smaller in smaller increments than 25 basis points uh, according to a new economic uh, analysis the british chamber of commerce says the bank of england could cut by at 10 basis points increments in the future with the first such cut coming before the end of the year which will take the bank rate to 4.9 percent the bank is expected to adopt a more cautious approach and make a series of uh 0.1 uh, percentage point cuts bringing the interest rate to 4.3 percent by the end of 2025 and falling to 3.8 by the end of 2026 says the bcc british chamber of commerce so um even if that is to happen, and even if they are to cut, what you've got is a central bank cutting at, expected to be cutting either 25 or 50 basis points, and you've got another central bank which are actually looking to cut less, right? They're looking to cut less at maybe potentially only uh, 10 basis points. So that's less than 25, obviously. So you still would want to buy the British pound as they're cutting less, Um than the Fed, so that's really the idea. And so for me, uh, looking for a potential buy, um, if not in the pullback, which to me, I don't really like that um, from a demand perspective. If I had to look for anything, of course, I would love for prices to come all the way down to here. I don't think they will, but I really want to see maybe prices at least move and create a strong demand zone before coming back down and then looking for a um, a decent area to look for a uh, trade. Or I would look for more of an intraday stop hunt, maybe at this level on a lower time frame. And if there is some sort of intraday stop hunt, then I will look for a potential buy um but I, I do think that ultimately this is uh, buying a high so i prefer a bit more of a discount um on here but um the first place i'm looking for uh, depending on what happens with the data this week so of course we do have on uh, the 10th uh, unemployment rate which is expected to come down and also we also have the uh, gdp month for month so um if those if that data point those data points do come out uh you know bullish um and support really rate holds or a smaller rate cut from the bank of england then i'm looking at going long just really waiting for prices to um form and see what happens uh pound yen so the pound yen with the yen being uh quite strong we do have uh, a pullback and again this isn't really a pair i'd be interested in because in, in terms of buying um maybe selling but but definitely not buying based on um 
uh, you know, the pound over the yen, uh, the pound, if the, the UK are one of the stronger currencies, I think uh, no point in really going long or short. It's a harder trade to kind of determine in terms of direction. So, but if you don't care about that and you're just looking for levels to look to buy and sell off, then you're looking for either those two demand zones or you're looking for, if you get a bit more of a pullback, uh, something where you can uh, look for a sell trade up here. I think technically this actually this level is really nice for a sell. Um, it's known as a what I call a CPR trade, capture pain relief, where traders have been caught going the wrong direction above a level um, and uh, or yeah above a level, any level, but um, they got caught going the wrong side and uh, prices are causing them some pain. So capture pain and then some relief in this area so um that relief should turn into a sell trade but let's see what happens but again not really a pair that i'm i'm looking at euro dollar so euro dollar is something i am interested in um the euro i do think are they are or the ecb although they're cutting rates i don't think they're cutting rates as aggressively as the federal reserve so um if that does continue in terms of, uh, you know, there's no changes to that, uh, the expectation, then I think the euro should continue to be the buy, whether it's, you know, in, in this uh, 1.104 area or just, in fact, I think a better level would be the round number, the 110 round number. So um, I do think the path of this resistance is still to the upside for uh, the euro I and mean, it's looking at the euro um, we do have it here for next week fading inflationary pressures are the strongest argument in favor of another rate cut which really has been priced in um, so um, I don't think there's going to be any surprises unless they obviously cut um, uh, either a larger cut or no cut uh, at the same time still high wage growth and still too high albeit declining selling pressure Expectations suggest that the fight against inflation is not entirely over. This will make further rate cut decisions beyond September meeting initially more complicated and controversial than currently priced in by financial markets. As a result, we don't expect any new forward guidance next week. Uh, next week's meeting, for now, the data dependency narrative has worked. Why change it? So, um, pretty much the euro are data dependent and they're not going to give forward guidance meaning they're not going to they may not be you know uh, hawkish or dovish and just let the market make up its own mind and the expectation really is for the euro to uh, only really cut after september maybe one more time so it could be october or it could be december so let's see uh, what they do and it also does depend upon the data and that would be coming in on thursday so yeah the 12th so let's see what happens on um on uh, on the 12th but ultimately i still think that the euro is more of a buy over the dollar than a sell so any pullback should be looked at as buying opportunities so i'm looking at that as buying opportunities uh the euro yen <clears throat> the euro um or the yen should really be the one to buy out of the two as they are the ones that are hiking rates and they're on their hiking cycle and everyone else is cutting rates so really any pullbacks into supply zones should be looked at as uh, more of a sell than a buy, right? Um, probably in uh, the 162s would be my preferred uh, area to look for a sell or just even higher. I think that supply zone, um, although, of course, it does look decent, I think I want a definitely a bigger uh, pullback in order to look for a sell trade on that euro yen, uh, euro pound. Um, uh, again, I think the, uh, the the pound probably has the edge So um, out of the two. So I do think any pullbacks into this zone should be actually quite nice for a sell trade if you want to look for, um, you know, buys on the pound and sells on the euro. So, um, you know, you've got a bit of a divergence. If the, if the Bank of England don't cut rates in September and the euro do, then in fact any pullbacks should be looked at as probably selling opportunities to the downside. Um, and the Australian dollar, uh, US dollar, the Australian dollar did suffer some weakness in the last uh, few hours, the last maybe seven, eight hours of the uh, of on Friday, uh, which caused me to have uh, a bit of a loss, but it didn't matter anyway because I had um, actually quite a really good week. So, um, the Australian dollar, US dollar, again, you've got the Australian dollar looking to hold rates and the 
US dollar looking to cut rates. So any, if anything, this should be looked at as a nice uh, buying opportunity. Uh, the demand zone kind of held for a little bit, but um, yeah, we had, you know, prices obviously go straight through. We are, we have got a bit of risk off in, um, uh, sentiment going on in the market at the moment. If we do look at the VIX, right, if we look at the VIX, um, the VIX is, um, and this is something that I put on for the, uh, for the members, anything above 20, a reading of 20 is considered, uh, more risk off and the higher the VIX goes, the more intense the risk sentiment. So we're seeing, um, a, a bit of risk, risk off sentiment come into the market. Remember at the beginning of the, of August, uh, we had, um, you know, a massive sell-off in the stock market. This was the unwind of the carry trade. And you can see how intense that risk off was. Um, we've had that, you know, uh, the market hasn't been that high really since COVID, right? So, um, although we are in a risk off environment, more risk off than risk on, um, I do think that price or the VIX should want to settle down or hopefully it does settle down and risk off doesn't become uh, too prevalent. But let's see. We do have risk events like, uh, of course, the election as well. So, in fact, we could stay elevated on the risk off uh, perspective. But let's see what happens. I don't expect it to really affect the Australian dollar too much. But um, and hopefully we get some China growth as well that would support the Australian dollar. But ultimately, um, I do think from a fundamental perspective in terms of uh, central bank monetary policy, the uh, the Australian dollar should be the buy and the uh, US dollar should be more of the sell. Uh, gold, we have gold and gold really hasn't pulled back too much considering um, we're still around these uh, all time highs above the well, just below the 2500 mark. So um, if you are looking to be a buyer of gold, I think a pullback down into this demand zone should be nice with the uh, US dollar and the Federal Reserve uh, looking to cut rates. Uh, I really can't see any reason why you would want to be a buyer of uh, the US dollar or try to short this um, the path of this resistance should really remain to the upside. And so any pullbacks on gold um, should be uh, seen as a buying opportunity and the S&P. So we spoke about this last week, matter of fact, um, and I'll go over this again. So I did uh, post this or uh, go over this last, like I said, last week, stock market. And it was an article from Bloomberg, which was talking about stocks climbed uh, in the final stretch of a wild August with traders bracing for what historically is uh, known as the worst month for equities. So since 1950, uh, the S&P has generated an average of 0.7%, or oh, an average loss, sorry, of 0.7% in September and finished only higher 43% of the time. So making it the worst month for stocks on an average return and positivity rate basis, according to Adam Turnquist, LPL Financial. The last four Septembers have also been notably weak with the index posting respective declines of 4.9%, 9.3%, 4.8%, and 3.9%. So again, we spoke about this last week, we measured it out, and we said when where prices was last week, which was up here, uh, we said that if, if you're looking at about, about a 3.9%, which is around here, that would pull really be a pullback back into some sort of fair value. So fair value is uh, where you have uh, an area that is expensive and an area that is cheap, right? And we know that to be uh, to be absolutely true because if prices weren't expensive up here, then they would go higher, right? And if prices weren't a bargain down here, then they would go lower. So we know that this was seen as a bargain price. This was seen as uh, an expensive area. And when prices came up back up to this expensive area, look at what happened. So we have, you know, the uh, September bias, I guess, or seasonality, where uh, statistically, you've got a 57% a, a chance that uh, prices should go to the downside, right? So um, we are where we are around fair value. Now, at the most extreme was, uh, it said 9.3%. Uh, over the lot was the most extreme pullback um, in September over the last four years. So if we take again the, the high to the low, 
9.3% ends up somewhere down here, so down at these lows again. So that could happen. Um, I do think that overall, though, as long as we get some sort of soft landing, meaning that the US doesn't go into a recession soon um, and the Fed do cut rates, in fact, that should be bullish for the stock market overall so um, let's see what happens uh, with with stocks if uh, the uh, there's fear that the us is going to go into a recession sooner then in fact this may continue even lower right but um, i don't think it i don't think the us is going into uh, a recession so my bias would be to buy uh, the s p and buy indexes apart from the uh the Japanese uh, 225 uh, stock market, which I'm actually short on, as it works in the opposite, right? You've got um, the Bank of Japan who are who are hiking rates, so that works in the opposite, and the the, the uh, their stock market should fall, which it has been doing. So uh, my bias would be more to the upside. So if it does pull back around these areas here, then I'd look for a buying opportunity, as long as again we do have. Um, uh, we don't have more a, a recession. A recession isn't imminent. So yeah, my bias is to look for buy trades on the S and P at decent levels. And so that brings us to the end of the analysis. Now getting into the uh, the trade updates and some trade analysis from last week and some new trades. Um, the Aussie New Zealand. And again, you can watch last week's video if you want to. Uh, uh, I guess uh, get a bit more of a detailed breakdown. Now this trade ended up being a profitable trade. I'll go down into like the uh, the lower time frame, and so um, managed to hit a one to one on the fifty percent pullback. So my original entry was um, was around here, right? The market order, and then prices pulled back to the 50% and then uh, that hit a one-to-one -one target which was nice and then what I did was as prices made new highs I trailed my stop on that original market order all the way up to here so um, as prices came down didn't lose too much not at all so one one lost a small amount on the uh, on the remaining position which was which would have been for example here in fact that would have been where it was so small win on this, nothing crazy, but um, but yeah, I'm looking to get back in on this uh, currency pair. So hopefully it gives me a bit of an entry, another entry. Euro New Zealand, this was uh, a, a frustrating one because I was planning on holding this. I ended up getting stopped out on, um, on this pullback. I think uh, my broker had increased the spread on this and ended up, because I trailed my stop up to about here. Um, so it ended up being like a, about a 1.3 uh, to 1 trade. I'd won two trades anyway off of this, so that was fine. And so the final position was um, was around here. So it was okay, decent trade, but a um, bit, bit annoying because I'm sure that... Um, uh, I should have been still in this trade and that, you know, I would have been really up here. So uh, about a three to one rather than taking my final profit or being stopped out on a trailing stop around here. So it is what it is. Profitable trade. Um, nothing to, um, you know, can't cry over it. There's going to be a thousand more trades to go. And uh, in my life, thousands of trades. So, yeah, it happens. Um, the next trade was the euro yen and in fact this was a loser that turned into actually a really nice winner so last week um, I went over this the entry around here which ended up stopping me out on all four of my positions because I did enter into four positions and then I did say in the video last week that if I get stopped out in this position then I will look to re-enter and that's what I did. And fortunately enough, um, as I re-entered uh, around uh, these lows here, I think it was, yeah, I think it was somewhere around there, entering into, again, uh, one, two, three positions, well, four positions, um, as prices ended up pulling back, triggering them into all four, then I managed to uh, make the money back plus more so i'm actually in uh the original trade which is um around now a what are we at 
around a 3.71 to 1. Uh, this trade here, though, ended up, I ended up taking profit around uh, here. I think it was somewhere around here. So that was a nice 3 to 1 trade. So ultimately, I made back you know, the, the, the loss on this plus uh, a lot more. And also as well, on my final position, I'm, I've am i trailed my stop down. So my stop loss is around there and I can't lose from here, right? So I've just booked the profits and just trading the stops down. My ultimate target is going to be hopefully somewhere around this 80% uh, discount. So that would work out to be a very, very nice trade if, um, if of course I hit that, then that trade should be a, uh, a nice seven to one type trade. Yeah, about a seven to one trade. So that's nice. <clears throat> if it does, of course, the yen continues to strengthen over the New Zealand dollar. Next trade was the CAD yen, which I'm in. This was actually a stop hunt. So, um, went above the market, nice level here, and a nice stop hunt. My entry was here, and so, yeah, we're continuing to fall. So I only ended up getting on one position on this as prices didn't pull back uh, at all, and now we've got rate cuts for the CAD. I do con expect this to continue to drop as well. And again, uh, targets will be somewhere around the 103s, somewhere around there. So that trade's going well. Uh, Swiss yen again another uh, stop hunt so we had touch 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 of a level prices went above it prices came back inside my entry was here managed I managed to get two positions in so when the prices pulled back it triggered me into that position there and then managed to take a one-to-one -one off um uh, somewhere around there on that position and then I'm now just got this position in uh, and trailing behind this swing there. So I'm assuming that the Swiss franc uh, and the Swiss National Bank should continue to cut rates, especially because Swiss inflation came in lower. So, um, yeah, Swiss inflation came in lower, so they, they, they're going to be forced to cut rates. So I do believe that this should be, um, we should see uh, more downside potential, maybe even past this low. So I'm going to see if I can hold this for as long as possible and see if it can continue to run the Aussie CAD um, this one was a small loss now uh, managed to get involved in this trade um, around here got triggered into two further positions one there and one there this position uh, this third position ended up uh, reaching a one-to-one -one, uh, somewhere around I think it was here around these highs, uh, which was nice. But then prices ended up collapsing um, uh, after uh, about two o'clock on the Friday. And it's surprising because again, the Canadian dollar and the Bank of Canada is, have, have cut rates. So you would think that the Australian dollar should strengthen, but maybe they're just looking for, you know, some liquidity to take out. So that's probably what it is, no matter, because I'm looking to get back in on this and look into if I can ride it all the way uh, a lot higher, right? So I just look at that as a tiny loss, uh, small loss, one, one, loss two, and uh, that's that. Uh, Aussie Swiss, this was actually a full stop out, not too great. Again, I would have thought that the Australian dollar would have been the stronger of the two. Again, no one knows what's gonna happen in the short term, right? No one knows, but over the medium to long term, you would, uh, you know, I'm betting that the Australian dollar uh, is going to strengthen over the Swiss franc. We've come down into this demand zone. And so, yeah, I'm looking for some buy trades now. And as long as risk um, doesn't go too far off, then this should be a really nice buy to the upside. So um, didn't even get a chance to uh, to to make any money, um, any money at all. Prices didn't do anything. It just literally from when I as soon as I entered prices just started dropping. And then that was that. It is what it is. So, um, yeah, four trades stopped out on um, the, uh, I say four trades, but they're part of one trade, but one trade, but broken down into four. Now, this was another trade uh, buying uh, the, uh, the the yen uh, means I'm shorting the uh, the uh, stock market, right? So on the daily time frame chart, we were in this uh, nice 
supply zone. And if I'm bullish on the yen, then I'm going to be and there and the Bank of Japan are hiking rates, then I would expect the uh, the Japanese stock market to fall. And that's basically what's happened. So uh, we go back down into this. This is where my uh, entry was around when prices pulled back. It was like nine in the morning around here. So um, that was my entry. And then again, uh, we got uh, triggered into one position or an extra position uh, once prices pulled back. So I was only in two positions, took a one to one on this position here, and then I've let this position now swing. So at the moment, you're seeing uh, this trade is now a 5.8 to 1, 5.83 to 1 trade. So that's nice. Um, and also, as well, I've trailed my stop down. Uh, to below, I think it's just here now. So I've locked in all of my profit. Was well, it all of it? But I've locked in some profits. So basically, I can't lose from here. And um, yeah, hopefully we continue going uh, lower. So nice trade so far on the Japanese yen. Uh, the silver um, trade I managed to get into as well. So again, the 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 fundamental reason why is because. Uh, precious metals going into a recession i'm assuming should um should rise right so and uh, the dollar should fall if the federal reserve are cutting rates so i ended up uh getting involved in this trade um around uh, around here and um managed to get a one to one trade so it managed to hit my one to one there so on the one to one on the uh, on on I think it was gold. In fact, I ended up taking um, full profit on gold on the silver gold. Um, say silver gold. Sorry, apologies. Uh, on the silver dollar, yeah. So silver dollar, not the silver euro. I think silver euro only took off took off fifty percent. But uh, silver dollar, I ended up taking off uh, one to one uh, off of that, and that was it. So I was out of this trade. And then the, it was silver euro that I was, I think I was planning on uh, running. And so when prices hit a one-to-one -one on this one, I didn't manage to get involved in uh, multiple positions, unfortunately, on this. Um, I took off 50% uh, off of that one. And I was thinking that, okay, let's see what happens with this. And I was expecting it to kind of, you know, move to the upside. Lots of upside potential on this. But um, on Friday, we just got this big move to the downside, which ended up stopping me out. I moved my stop up, luckily. Uh, I say luckily, but it was my stop loss was probably around there. So ended up being a very tiny loss. But um, if you pretty much a scratch trade, um, but I'd made the one to one on the silver uh, dollar, right? So silver dollar um, was the profitable trade. The silver euro trade was the one where it kind of got a bit, um, just basically a break even trade. So I'm out of that, but planning to enter into, um, you know, these trades if they give me another entry as I am a bit more bearish on the dollar than I am on the um, on precious metals. So um, I expect precious metals to continue appreciating. So, yeah, that's those are really the trades uh, this week. So lots going on, lots of trades. Um some weeks you get plenty of setups. Some weeks you get a few, right? And some weeks you might not get none. But um, this week has been a, a very good week so far and uh, hopefully it continues. So, uh, yeah, that brings us to the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed the analysis and uh, take care. Hope you have a great trading week and speak to you all soon.